We're back again in San Francisco at the MRS 50th anniversary spring meeting. There's so much cutting edge research to feature here and we would feature it all if only we had the time. Today though, we're zeroing in on just a few of the most innovative designs in material science. I'm Tweed Vu, here again with MRS TV to give you all the best of this year's spring meeting. From data-driven design to implantable devices that bring together the biotic and abiotic, today's episode is focused on innovative designs in material science. We'll pop into Kristen Person's Symposium X session, where she'll tell us about how data drives her work at the Materials Project. We'll also talk to George Maliaris about his work in implantable devices to treat neurological disorders and brain cancer. Plus, we'll continue our visits to top research groups worldwide, from Los Alamos National Labs to the National University of Singapore. But first, let's check in with MRS Postdoctoral Award winner, Chi Tian. My name is Qi Qian. I'm winning the MRS postdoctoral award. There has been like a lot of research efforts in putting materials together, but in a traditional way is by epitaxial growth. And in this growth that we always need to consider the lattice constant. But in my research that I'm using a different method called uh, Van der Waal integration. And in this way, what I do is just take the bulk material and peel it off and stack them together. And if I am putting the contacts close enough, the Van der Waal interaction will be activated and that will help to hold these two contacts close enough. So uh, in this way that I don't need to thinking about the lattice constant, so there will be a lot of material choice and to make a lot of diverse hydrojunctions. I feel like truly honored to receive this MRS postdoc award and uh, like definitely grateful that I got recognition from my peers. I think this award is like a testament to my hard work and the dedication that I put in this field. So uh, I also feel that it's also a recognition of this whole Wonder Wall integration uh, area. And I'm really excited that the, the community is putting more growing efforts into this area. I hope that uh, I can inspire others to make more efforts in this scientific endeavors with commitment and passion. For so much of the materials world, energy is at the forefront of our minds. At Los Alamos National Laboratory, future or fundamental understanding of transport under reactor extremes is an initiative funded by the Office of Basic Energy Science in the Department of Energy. They're setting out to better understand how materials are affected by the extreme conditions of nuclear reactors. Our main goal is to understand how irradiation and corrosion act synergistically to impact the evolution of a material. And the, the premise is that irradiation or corrosion by themselves behave one way, and when you couple them together at the same time, a material is going to evolve in a new way. And our goal is to understand the fundamental mechanisms by which that material interacts with the radiation and corrosion environment. So FUTURE is a uh, partnership between two national labs, uh, us and Pacific Northwest National Laboratory, and five universities. And it's this collection of partners, this collection of expertise that allows us to target this complex problem. The, the most important thing that FUTURE has discovered so far is that radiation and, and corrosion interact differently depending on the material and the environment. So for example, we've seen that irradiation can slow down corrosion. We've also seen that it can enhance the rate of corrosion. So it's really a complex problem where it really depends on the material, the corrosive environment, the conditions, uh, and uh, the details of the chemistry and microstructure of the material. Going forward, what we're trying to understand is how all those interplay and trying to build a fundamental understanding so we have at least some predictive understanding of what's going on when a material is exposed to corrosion and irradiation at the same time. MRS Advances, the newest journal in the MRS portfolio, publishes snapshots of work in progress on key materials topics identified by MRS meeting programming. The journal is indexed in the Web of Science, Emerging Sources Citation Index, Scopus, and Simago. MRS Advances offers rapid review and time to publication, and papers cited count toward the author's H index. 
Don't delay. Submit your manuscript to MRS Advances before the May 16th deadline. Spend your springs in Seattle at the next two MRS spring meetings. With a diverse metropolitan area and premier destinations for arts and entertainment, Seattle is considered a tier one location for meetings and conferences. We hope you'll join us there in 2024 and 2025 for our upcoming spring meetings. MRS Energy and Sustainability addresses broad perspectives in energy and sustainability as they relate to the impact of materials research on society. The journal welcomes individuals interested in guest editing a topical collection on the latest renewable energy technologies. For more information on the journal, visit mrs.org slash energy sustainability journal. MRS Presents offers these upcoming webinars in April, Emotional Intelligence, Relationship Management on the 12th, followed by an MRS Bulletin webinar on Sustainable Development of Materials on April 26th. In May, join us on the 24th for another MRS Bulletin webinar on Advanced Materials for Implantable Neuroelectronics. Register today by visiting mrs.org slash mrspresents. In 2021, MRS Bulletin launched MRS Bulletin Impact, a premier outlet for high-impact original materials research. Original research articles feature hot topics, innovative work, and foundational contributions. Learn more about submitting a manuscript at mrs.org slash bulletin impact. MRS now offers a free one-year dues renewal option for recent doctoral graduates. This offer, available only once per member, is designed to support our next generation of researchers as they transition from student to career professionals. It will include all benefits and advantages of MRS membership. The next membership cycle begins January 1st, 2024. Check your inbox. Details will be sent by email to those who are eligible. The National University of Singapore's Department of Material Science and Engineering is pursuing cutting-edge research in advanced materials and their applications. Let's head there now to see why they're recognized worldwide as one of Asia's premier material science engineering departments. The material science and engineering department at NUS has almost uh, doubled in size from uh, roughly 18 academic staff about four years ago to uh, almost 40 today. And we are planning to hire at least another 10 academic staff to the department. And US has recognized uh, that materials are going to be very important in the near future, both from a purely academic point of view, but also from a societal impact point of view. Many new device concepts and industries require a, huge advances in materials and this is a great opportunity for groundbreaking discoveries, spin-offs and industry impact for the university. The most notable hire for our department was Professor Konstantin Novoselov, the Nobel laureate who discovered graphene, one of the most important material breakthroughs over the last decade in an institute which Professor Novoselov is heading, the Institute for Functional Intelligent Materials. Other areas of focus for my department are sustainability, soft robotics and variable electronics. I'm here with George Maliaris, the Mid-Career Researcher Award winner. George, what a pleasure to have you. Pleasure is all mine. Tell us a little bit about the work that led to your award. So the award recognizes the application of organic electronic materials in biology and medicine. This is now called organic bioelectronics, and it's a research direction that involves using organic materials to interface with uh, biological organs, such as the brain. So tell us a little bit about what are some of the biological applications of this research? Yes, so the biological applications are either in understanding the brain, which is a very fundamental and important question, or in developing tools to treat disease, in particular neurological disorders. An example of the latter is deep brain stimulation, where you implant electrode arrays in the brain and stimulate with current 
so as to help people who suffer from movement disorders, such as Parkinson's disease. Hmm. This has been uh, shown to cause a major amelioration of the symptoms. And hopefully it's a concept that can be generalized to other uh, disease, for example, autoimmune uh, disease. Any other uh, diseases that we should be aware of? Because this is really fascinating. It could be a game changer for a lot of people, for example, who suffer from Parkinson's. Yes, there has been success in movement disorders, such as dystonia, Parkinson's disease, tremor, in epilepsy, where this technology has been shown to decrease the intensity and frequency of seizures, um, in neuropsychiatric disorders, obsessive compulsive disorder, in obesity it's being trialed, as well as in some autoimmune diseases. Crohn's disease, type 1 diabetes is believed to be treatable with this technology. Very exciting times. And why would you say it's so important for material scientists to get involved in this type of work? It is uh, important because it's a field that is limited by and defined by technology. Mm -hmm. And as a result, material scientists have to play a major role in for example, developing new materials at the interface between electronics and biology, conducting structure properties investigations of that interface, developing more stable devices to deliver treatments, and so on and so forth. So for material science, it is a home game. Mm. And it's a game that is very important, has major societal implications. And just from what you're saying, it also seems that it's crucial also for this to be sort of an interdisciplinary, not just scientists, but a number of other people involved too. Yes, it is very interdisciplinary. And the important thing is to identify the idea that excites everyone across the board, excites the engineers, the scientists, and the clinicians. And that's the idea worth pursuing. Thanks so much, George, for taking the time to share this amazing technology with us. Well, up next, let's head to Kristen Person's Symposium X session, where she'll tell us all about data-driven materials innovation and design. I am hoping to show um, the era of data-driven materials design as an innovation multiplier. Um, if we collect, produce, curate, really systematic and high-value data sets, that's important not just for one research group, but also for the, all the people who, uh, who end up using that data set, uh, which accelerates their research as well as the group that produced it. Um, I'm also hoping to show that um, producing those systematic, robust data sets is, is difficult and what it takes to do that. So I'll show a little bit of software infrastructure and, and the value of interdisciplinary teams to, to create these, these infrastructures, because it requires both, um, both people with expertise in software, high performance computing, um, domain science to know what you're doing. Uh, and looking forward or like analyzing our society, um, it's necessarily not what we fund interdisciplinary teams like that. And it's not what we educate either. So, so creating these teams is difficult and, um, and but highly valuable. We've lived this from the very beginning. This was, uh, this was our mission uh, to, to create the kind of infrastructure that would allow us to produce these data sets and deliver them the, to, to the community. And I think we've found that not only is it highly rewarding, but it's also, as I said, it's challenging because you are dealing with interdisciplinary work, uh, attracting people to those kinds of careers, uh, retaining them, once they become really, really good, then other people like to, uh, to snap them up. Um, it is a very moving target as well. We've, we've sort of positioned ourselves at the very big sort of forefront. Many of the decisions we made early on were, were new. People, for example, uh, we chose a new kind of infrastructure for databases that were very new at that point, MongoDB, that's now being adopted by many other people. Uh, we chose Python over other languages. Uh, we created the first API for materials data, and all of these sort of have become standards today. So we have seen ourselves as trailblazers in this data-driven materials design. I really hope that attendees will take away not only sort of excitement of what data can do for material science, um, it's somewhat surprising to me that 
in parts of, the, of our society, we, we don't doubt the value of data. If you look at security or, or traffic you know, patterns or uh, even going to a restaurant tonight, we take data almost for granted that that has an inherent value. But in science, we've lagged behind in the appreciation of data and curating data and keeping data in, as a value, as a, something that actually can, can accelerate people's science. And um, I'm hoping we're going to change that. We all have to really re realize that we are part of this data infrastructure, all of us, and we have to contribute in order to, to become the, the data revolution of material science. That's all for today on MRS TV. We hope you're coming out of this episode feeling inspired by all the amazing innovative designs featured here at MRS. But if you just can't get enough, there's plenty of ways to keep tuning in. You can keep watching MRS TV on screens around the Moscone Center, on the MRS website, in your hotel room on Channel 67 at the Intercontinental, or on Channel 60 at the Marriott Marquis. And finally, on YouTube and Twitter. Tomorrow, in our final episode of this season, we'll be looking ahead at the next 50 years of MRS and materials research. We'll hear from Gopal Rao about the MRS Bulletin and from Taihuan Yan about the future of nanomaterials and energy. I'm Tui Vu, and I'll catch you one more time for tomorrow's episode.